So Amanda has talked to you about some of the risks that rivers pose with flooding. And of course, it all depends on where you live. It seems that people like to live next to rivers and that causes a bit of a problem, Amanda. Yeah, it certainly does. As you can um, see behind us, uh, people clearly do like to live right next to the river. And I mean, who wouldn't? It's such a beautiful view. Um, but it does mean that flooding is one of the most common hazards in New Zealand because, because people live right next to the river and rivers generally tend to flood quite often. Um, it, it means that those properties and the people that live there are at risk. Yeah, and we do have a lot of rivers in Aotearoa. So you work for the council, so you have um, work to do in terms of managing floods. What are some of the methods that you use to, to manage floods? We have um, a number of different methods. So we have structural methods and non-structural. So some of the structural ways that we manage floods is we build stop banks. So these are literally banks of dirt alongside the river that prevent the, the waters from going over into properties. Uh, we can sometimes raise houses if the houses are really close to the river and are quite low. Um, we also build sort of rock groins and, and other structures alongside the river that prevent the, the banks from eroding and the river going further out. Um, and we also allow areas for, for um, such as parks um, like Otaihanga Domain um, where the floodwaters can actually go and don't cause an issue because there aren't houses in terms of the non-structural ways, um, that's a lot of our river man management practices. So that's planting trees alongside the river that help stabilise the banks. Um, developing plans such as our floodplain management plan. So this is unique to Wellington. Uh, some of the other councils will also have them, but they're in different forms. Um, and these outline all the different tools that we use. Um, what else? There's also uh, district planning and so that's uh, allocating certain areas alongside the river where people can't build their houses to prevent them from being put at risk in the first place. Mm, that sounds very sensible. It sure does. So lots that can be done and I guess restoring the awa and planting alongside the river would all, all help as well? Certainly does. So as we talked about earlier today, um, one of the big threats to the river is, is the loss of habitat through different trying different land uses um, and as you can see days like today the river's not in flood which is most of the time um, and so we come up with ways of how we can enhance that river um, and and one of those is planting so they have they have a double benefit of protecting people from floods and erosion but also from um, recreating that habitat um, and here in Wellington um, our flood protection department produce a environmental strategy which is developed in conjunction with community groups and the other local councils and businesses and, and all of the uh, local iwi as well get involved and this just outlines the, the different ways that we will restore the catchment so it's not just planting trees it's it's all about um, recreation aspects as well um, people love to walk up and down the river so there's plenty of that um, and just all sorts of sort of recreational and environmental things that we can do to enhance that river. Mm, and you're going to look more at some of those restoration aspects tomorrow. Well, thanks, Amanda. We've learned so much today, and it's been great to have you guide us throughout this journey along the hour. Thank you. No worries. It's been great having me.